thank you, Laurence. Uh, so it's uh, again a, a great pleasure to be here, and I have the difficult task to try to uh, um, replace uh, Catherine. So my fir first lecture is on uh, infiltrative lung diseases from pattern recognition to diagnosis. <coughs> so the, I would like to start with a, a short comment on the term infiltrative. It's um, much more appropriate than interstitial because most of interstitial diseases are associated with lesions of the airways or with the uh, lesions of uh, alveoli. And their consequence on imaging is the presence of infiltrates. So what means infiltrate? We, we, don't, we don't know exactly what it means. And it's a very good term because it is vague enough to be exact. And we have a, a French expression for, for that, which is a moyen poisson, grounding the fish. And uh, more seriously, we, we need to um, review uh, the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule to better understand the signs of uh, infiltrated lung diseases. It is the basic anatomic unit of the lung. Normally, you can't see the boundaries of the secondary pulmonary lobule, but you need to know that it has a polygonal shape. And at the center of the lobule, you, you will find the bronchioles and arteries, and also some lymphatics. And at its periphery, there are some veins and also lymphatics. And having this in mind, you understand why in uh, cardiogenic edema, there is a smooth thickening of the interlobular septa because the veins are so large. And uh, with lymphangitis, um, lymphangitic spread of carcinomatosis, there's an irregular thickening of the intercellular uh, intercellular um, septa and also some micronodules because there are lymphatics at the center of the lobule and also at its periphery. And this is a video of thoracoscopy um, performed in a, in a smoker and what you see here is the presence of um, uh, anthracotic pigments in the lymphatics uh, drawing the, the shape of a um, sonogory pulmonary lobule and you can see also some pigments uh, at the center of the lobule. The bronchioles are at the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule and this explains why bronchiolar diseases are purely centrilobular. You will find some nodules um, which are located at the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. Infiltrative lung diseases represent more than 100 diseases, but fortunately uh, only a minority are frequent and three represent 50% of cases and you need to recognize these diseases. Uh, um, it is sarcoidosis, pulmonary fibrosis and also pulmonary involvement of collagen vascular diseases. Some entities uh, may be idiopathic or secondary and lastly, some patterns, especially ground glass, may be due to very different mechanisms. Okay, I can continue. So, this is the way um, radiologists usually feel about infiltrated lung disease. So, I'm going to try to help you with this. Uh, it is important to identify the predominant pattern together with its distribution and performing multiple neural deformation is very helpful and you will have to know some things about the context and look for associated signs. So we are going to review the five main patterns which are linear opacities, micronodules, cystic pattern, consolidation and ground glass. Uh, concerning linear opacities, there are two different kinds of uh, types of linear opacities. Uh, first uh, sort is septal line, and they are due to thickening of the interlobular septa. As I mentioned, normally they are not visible, and they may become visible because of fluid accumulation in pulmonary edema or cell infiltration in lymphangitis, or uh, also if there are uh, some. Um, 
fibrotic lesions. They are better seen when, when the, there is a, only a mild uh, thickening of the interlobular sector. We will need to um, uh, look at the, the anterior regions and also in the paracardiac region to find this um, uh, thickening. There are three types of thickening. Smooth thickening is mainly due to pulmonary edema. Nodular thickening is mainly due to lymphangitis and a thickening with distortion is uh, present in uh, fibros fibrosis. Uh, there are also non-septal linear opacities, opacities when the reticulations are smaller than the size of a secondary pulmonary lobule, which is usually between 1 cm and 2 cm and a half. And when associated with traction bronchiectasis and chronic cambic, it, it is due to fibrosis. If intralobular thickening is associated with ground glass, this feature is was called crazy paving. Uh, the French uh, translation is uh, um, odd, uh, pavement fou. And this sign was initially described in alveolar proteinosis, but it's not specific of this condition because it is seen with all diseases uh, showing chronic alveolar filling, especially uh, liquid pneumonia or bronchial alveolar cell carcinoma. <coughs> and last uh, type of linear opacity are subpleural lines as shown here and here. There are two different etiologies. One is subpleural atelectasis, and in this case, um, the feature will disappear in the prone position, or if it passes, it is a sign of my fibrosis that you will see in asbestos exposure and also in systemic sclerosis. So with this sign, it is very important to perform prone acquisition to see if it is uh, persisting or not. Second pattern is micronodules. Micronodules, it's very easy. You <laughs> need to look at the distribution, and again, there are three different distributions. One is very lymphatic, the second is glandular distribution, and the last is random distribution. Very lymphatic distribution is the main pattern and the main sign in sarcoidosis. You will find micronodules. Remember that sarcoidosis is a granulomatous disease and you will find um, small nodules uh, along the pleura, along the interlobular sector and along the uh, bronchovascular bundles, uh, meaning it is they are located where lymphatics are. Second distribution is the centrilobular distribution with three inbred features. It means there's a bronchiolitis. Um, three inbred reflects the inflammation of the small airways and where, when uh, there are no treatment features it represents vascular diseases or peribronchial diseases. And the main thing is the subdural sparing and the, um, also the uh, peripheral sparing such as in this case, it is a ODTS, organic toxic dust syndrome, and there is a diffuse bronchiolitis. And it's very helpful to use this uh, um, reformation with a um, minimum, ma maximum intensity projection with a thickness of 5 mm. The third distribution is the random distribution, and you will find uh, nodules everywhere. And there are two different uh, etiologies. One is infection, and the second is tumor. And the, to help the recognition between infection, and especially uh, between um, miliary tuberculosis and uh, um, miliary uh, carcinomatosis, uh, in the um, miliary carcinomatosis, you will have uh, nodules of different size. Uh, whereas in uh, miliary tuberculosis, all micronodules have the same size. The third pattern is the cystic and cyst-like pattern. Concerning cysts, it's very easy. Again, there are three uh, things to remember. 
free um, distribution for micronodules and three types of septal lines, so remember the number three. So, three diseases with cyst formation. One is lymphangioleomyomatosis. Um, it is observed only in female patients, and you will find round cysts that are diffusely distributed within the lungs. The second disease is Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So, uh, the patients are different, they are men, usually young men, smokers, and you will have um, cysts coexisting with nodules because the cysts are due to the cavitation of the nodules. And depending on the stage of the disease, you will have only cysts or uh, only nodules or a mixed um, presentation. And last thing to remember with non-grand cell is just cytosis. Uh, it is its upper lobe predominance that you don't have in lymphangioleomyomatosis. And it is also important to uh, see that the, the cysts are a bizarre shape because they are uh, due to the coalescence of different <coughs> cavities. And the last disease that maybe you can forget because it's not very frequent is lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia, which is observed in patients with immune, immune disorders uh, such as uh, um, Jogren syndrome, for instance. A cyst-like condition is the presence of honeycombing. What is honeycombing? It's um, several pulmonary cavities with um, not only one layer but several layers that are observed at the lung periphery. And it is a sign of destruction of irreversible fibrosis and it is the main pattern in UIP. What is UIP? UIP mean, means usual interstitial pneumonia and it is um, um, histopathologic definition and you will find UIP in uh, hydropathic fibrosis or in uh, fibrosis accompanying some collagen vascular diseases, especially, especially lupus, but also it is the uh, fibrosis that is uh, existing as asbestosis in chronic forms of hypersensitivity pneumonitis and also uh, with drug toxicity. Fourth pattern, consolidation. You all know what is a consolidation. It is a dense opacity obscuring the vessels with their bronchi parts. And it depends if the feature is acute or chronic. And I will just uh, insist on the, um, this feature, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, where the consolidation <coughs> has a very uh, a typical appearance um, uh, because it, it, it is a linear consolidation which is parallel to the pleural surface. And the last pattern is ground glass. Ground glass is not a very helpful sign because it is not specific at all. And um, it is an uh, opacity which is less dense than consolidation. Vessels are not obscured. obscured. And the difficult thing is Ground glass may be due to two different mechanisms, alveolar filling, it is more alveolar process, or alveolar wall thickening, and it is an interstitial disease. So you will have to check if the ground glass is homogeneous, if it is pure or with associated signs, if there is associated intralobular thickening and traction projectasis, it is a sign that you will find in NSIP. NSIP is the second form of fibrosis. It means non-specific interstitial pneumonia, and the main features are uh, presence of ground glass and traction bronchiectasis. There are uh, some heterogeneous ground glass with two features that you need to recognize. This is here a uh, hedges pattern. You have different uh, sort of ground glass, more dense, uh, less dense, and normal lung. Sorry. And the second heterogeneous feature is mosaic attenuation. What is a mosaic attenuation? 
it is um, <coughs> the case when you have small vessel size in low attenuating area. Here it is not ground glass because it's not, it is ground glass, but it is not an infiltrative disease. It is just the fact that in this area there is a vasoconstriction and this vasoconstriction explains um, explains why the vessels are a small size. There are two mechanisms for mosaic attenuation, uh, of course vascular occlusion, but it may be functional in uh, areas with hyperventilation and in this case there is, a, there is an expiratory worsening as shown here and if you have this you may suspect a, a constructive bronchitis. What about the CT acquisition protocol? You don't need any contrast. You need to have a volumetric acquisition with a thin reconstruction thickness. And it is very helpful to uh, use post-processing with maximum intensity projection, minimum intensity projection. And this is the reason why you absolutely need to have standard reconstruction algorithm. You can't perform uh, minimum intensity uh, projection with um, high uh, resolution uh, reconstruction algorithm. Uh, so in some in, in some cases you will need to have a prone acquisition, but you may also decide to only uh, perform CT in prone position, and in some cases you will need uh, expiratory uh, CT acquisition. Multipolar reformation is useful to um, look at the distribution. Uh, maximum intensity projection will help micronodule detection and trim bud detection, and minimum intensity projection is useful for cyst detection and mosaic attenuation detection. So, what about this case? This is a coronal reformation. You can see that the main pattern is the presence of cyst. There is an upper lobe predominance and the cysts are, are not rounded, they have an irregular shape, and the disease is perfect, longer on cell isocytosis. In this case, uh, what is the main pattern? Several layers at the lung periphery. Honeycombing, perfect. And the distribution, it's predominant at the lung base and it's peripheral, it's UIP. Uh, in, the, in this case, it was a patient with a lupus. Here, main pattern is brown glass with traction, bronchiectasis. You can see that it is a minimum intensity projection reformation and you can see that it, it helps uh, the differentiation between uh, cavities uh, due to anecombing and enlargement of the bronchi. So, the uh, main pattern is ground glass and traction bronchiectasis. It's NSIP, and you can see here the patient had a surgical biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. Maximum intensity projection is uh, helpful to detect subtle micronodules. You may suspect there are some micronodules here, but they are much better seen with MIP. And it is a treating pattern, means the small airways are inflammatory, and it was a, um, aspiration bronchitis in the patient who had previous um, laryngeal cancer. And here you have uh, this uh, abnormal appearance of the vessels with nodules uh, against the vessel in a lymphatic distribution, better seen with a MIP reconstruction, and it is very lymphatic distribution in a sarcoidosis. Um, this patient has uh, uh, had a bone marrow transplantation and he has signs of obstruction on the pulmonary functional test. What do you think of the CT image here? Is it normal? Could be. So you have 
to realize that here there are few vessels, but something <coughs> very useful, and if you should only remember one thing about this lecture, is you need to use minimum intensity projection in patients who have bone marrow transplantation and signs of obstruction because you will detect mosaic attenuation which is due to uh, constrictive bronchiolitis and it is the manifestation of graft, graft versus host reaction. So minimum intensity projection is very helpful to detect subtle mosaic attenuation in patients with chronic PE and in patients with constrictive bronchiolitis. Did you understand the two different mechanisms about mosaic attenuation? You may have vascular obstruction or it may be functional and in this case there's a worsening in expiratory CT. Infectative lung diseases have uh, different etiologies. It might be infection, environmental uh, cause, or granulomatosis, or collagen vascular diseases. And they are, um, if all these um, possibilities are excluded, you conclude it is idiopathic. And there is a quite complex classification, and usually it discourages people, but it's not very difficult. This is the classification of the uh, American Thoracic Society and European Respiratory Society. So, the first two diseases are fibrosis. I already um, mentioned UIP feature <laughs> with predominance of onecombing, NSIP feature with predominance of ground glass and traction bronchiectasis. This one you may forget, it's uh, RADS. A patient coming at the hospital in the morning and in the afternoon it is he is with a chest tube in the intensive care unit and he has uh, alveolar uh, images uh, and a uh, very uh, severe condition. Uh, fourth, um, it's uh, chronic cryptogenic organizing pneumonia with the consolidation sometimes with this typical linear shape and the these two diseases are diseases due to um, um, tobacco smoking and the last one you, you can forget it because it's not very frequent. So, we'll, you need to recognize UIP, NSIP and COP mainly. So, my um, topic is from pattern to uh, disease recognition, so now you're going to work. What do you think of this pattern? How would you describe it? Hmm? Is it normal? <laughs> you have some uh, dense images here. You have ground glass in a subporal peripheral distribution. But there are two very important rules. Number one, um, ask yourself if it could be nothing, especially if you are ground glass in dependent region and if the patient performs with poor inspiration, because what th this could be subroll ground glass, but if you ask the patient to take a deep breath and you perform a second acquisition in the prone position, the patient has nothing. So, first rule. Second rule is, could it be simply pulmonary edema? And um, this is the case when you have abnormalities with a central predominance, mainly ground glass and septal lines associated with pleural effusion, pulmonary vein enlargement, and hypodense and large mediastinal lymph node. There's water inside the lymph node. And this is the case here. It's simply pulmonary congestion. And then, after being sure it's not um, artifactual uh, gravity images or cardiac insufficiency, you look at the distribution. Are there signs of fibrosis, such as onecombing or traction bronchiectasis? 
if it is the case, it is a fibrosis. You just have to check if it is a UAP type or NSAP type. And you need to, it's, don't get lost with all sides, find the main pattern and uh, look at the context. <clears throat> Let's play. So, what do you think? What is the main pattern? Hmm? Cyst? Yes. What is the distribution? Apollo. What is the shape of the cyst? Bizarre. So it is longer hand cell. It's just hydrocytosis. Perfect. Here, what is the main pattern? Hmm? Several layer of cyst. It's on a combing in a subgroup distribution. It is UIP. Here, you have brown glass and fraction bronchiectasis. You can see that it is very helpful for minimum intensity projection, and you need standard reconstruction algorithm. It is NSIP. Here, consolidation. Peripheral distribution, linear consolidation, it is cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. And here, what is the main pattern? Nodules, what is the distribution? Very lymphatic, it is sarcoidosis. Look at the, um, the accumulation of uh, micronodules against the minor fissure here and how the fissure is distorted show signs of distortion. <laughs> and you may uh, suspect that there are also enlarged lymph nodes here. Here, what is the main pattern? Brown glass? No. Micronodules. The distribution? Random? It is linear age. <laughs> and lastly, what is the main pattern? Central lines, you can see the shape of the secondary pulmonary nodule. Smooth and thickening, it is pulmonary edema. So I hope that after the lecture you can find a way out. Thank you.